So getting supports off your 3D printed miniatures can often be a bit of a tedious task. You've got the risk of ripping bits off or snapping bits or just kind of leaving some nasty marks behind. So in this video, I'm just gonna cover off how I remove supports, especially from the smaller, more fiddly models, and hopefully that will kind of help you out in the future. So you've all probably heard of the hot water method, but this comes with a couple of downsides. So one of the things that I've done is I use an old sort of like water heating bottle that I used to use for my kids when they were growing up to heat up their bottles. And this works fantastically well for me for a couple of reasons. Now, one of the great things about using the hot water method is quite simply, it just helps to kind of loosen up some of the resin supports on there. Sometimes they will literally just peel off as you're pulling them out of the water. And also as well, it's meant to, as far as I'm aware, help to remove some of that impact. You know, where you get those craters that are left behind, when you just kind of try to remove the resin supports or snap them off without doing the hot water method or heating them up, they can leave these little craters on your models. And on smaller models, those craters can look bigger. So it's just something that kind of helps to alleviate that. Now, you can do this with a simple like cup of water. You just need to heat up your water. But the one issue with it is it means you're constantly having to get rid of that water, which is contaminated resin, which can be a bit of a pain. Using something like my little bottle warmer, the great thing is I can just leave that water in there and heat it up when I come back to it. And it also keeps it at the right temperature that I want to use. Now, I'm not entirely sure of the temperature. I should have probably measured, but how I tend to measure it is if you can keep your finger in there for about five to 10 seconds, then that's good. If you put your finger in there straight away and it's boiling and it's scalding, that is the wrong temperature. Now, you don't want to go too hot, quite simply because what it will do is it will start to warp your models or cause them to become super flexible and weak, and then you're just going to rip all the different pieces off there. So you need to keep it at a nice, I guess, a hot temperature, but definitely not boiling. Once you've got your bottle warmer or your hot water ready, take your models and dip them in. Now, I tend to leave them in for around about five to 10 seconds, the same length of time I could, you know, safely keep my hand in there and then I take them out. Now, if you are using something like a really fiddly small model, so these ones here that I've got from Mammoth Factory, they're really detailed, they're meant to be D&D minis, so there's a lot of detail on there, but smaller, more flexible parts like swords and everything else. If you just go in there and peel the supports off, sometimes that works, but you've also got the risk that those little bits like swords, maybe you've got bits kind of come off belts or horns, something like that, when you peel the supports off, you might also peel off the bits you don't want to. So what I do first is I grab a scalpel and I'll cut around. So like the swords here, for example, I kind of just slice nicely away and any other bits that look relatively fiddly. So once you've done that and you've loosened all those delicate parts, you can then just peel off the support and it's as easy as that. If you want at this stage, or whilst it's still warm, you can go back in there with your scalpel or whatever method that you're gonna use and take off any of those sort of like tag bits that kind of hang off it. I tend to leave it a little bit later. Any of the big glaring bits, I'll take off straight away, but I will leave the rest later. And the reason I do this is once you've cured your models with those bits on, you can kind of just run your thumb over it. And a lot of the time they will just kind of come clean off. And it's a really nice little easy process. So on your bigger models, you can normally get away with just dipping them in and then just peeling those supports off and they'll come away so nice. It's a really clean and satisfying process when you do this. However, if you do want to be cautious, if you've got anything that's kind of hanging over, maybe like a sword on this bust that I'm doing here, it's worthwhile just kind of going around with scalpel just to make sure there's nothing worse than going through all the hassle of obviously printing and slicing and then doing up the cleanup and then putting it in there and then just ripping the sword off by accident. That's just really frustrating. So just taking a few extra seconds at this stage can really help. Now, another method that I will sometimes use, and this is for larger models or for bases, for example, I'll grab a heat gun. Now, the great thing about using a heat gun instead of the hot water method is you've got no hot water. You've got no water to get rid of. You've got no water that kind of gets onto your models, potentially leaves a little bit of residue over it. You don't have to wait for them to dry afterwards. You can just grab your heat gun and then start blasting. The issue with this one is you're not gonna keep it at a consistent temperature like you would in something like the bottle warmer. So you've gotta be really careful because otherwise you've got the risk of, I guess, starting to really cause that resin to become super flexible and you'll have that issue of overheating them, which means you might get some more tearages or snappages or any of those words I'm gonna throw in there. So I tend to blast them for about, again, five to 10 seconds. I try to do a bit of a full rotation on it. And at that stage, you can repeat the same process. So you can then just peel them off. I'd normally do this on larger models or things like bases and everything, just because there's less to go wrong. When I've done it before on the smaller, more fiddly ones with delicate parts on it, 
Using the heat gun, I've not had great results with. I always find I get better results with the hot water method. If maybe I was a bit more controlled and I experimented with it, I could probably get away with it. But I save this for either the more robust models that don't have delicate parts on it, things like bases, or things that are just too big to fit into my hot water. So I hope that video has helped you. It's just a quick guide. A lot of people have been asking me, how do I remove supports without like snapping off arms or swords or legs and all of that jazz. So I figured I'd put this together. My go-to one is the hot water method, but I do strongly suggest getting something like a hot water bottle thing. It just means that you get like nice consistent temperature. You don't constantly have resin contaminated water to get rid of. Now, don't use one that you've already got and that you're using with kids because obviously dipping your bottle in there and giving them like resin soaks just don't do it don't do it you'll uh, end up in very big trouble <laughs> so uh, make sure you just get one that you're not going to be using for any other purpose hope that video has helped if it has hit like and subscribe button come along in the future for some more content head over to our discord channel where we discuss all things like 3d printing you can share your tips and tricks below see you soon bye